Welcome everyone to our uh, fulfillment workshop this afternoon. Um, we're going <clears> to look at the art of fulfillment using man and machine. My name is Georgia Laybourne. I'm going to be the moderator today, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by two incredible experts in the industry, Sebastian Lefebvre from Manhattan Associates and Remy Malcheron from Exotech, representing software and robotics hardware in the warehouse, each of them. So today we're going to be addressing the resourcing conundrum within the warehouse space juggling the parameters of space allocation. Do you manage the stock for e-com or for store replenishment? Do you run multiple brands or do you have different brands in different warehouses? Are you looking at manual labor or are you looking at automated labor? Or is it possible to do all of them within one DC? Do you have to choose between these things or can you actually get the promised land? So. Before we get into the detail, I'm going to ask Seb and Remy to introduce themselves. So, Remy, can you kick us off with a bit of an overview about you, your experience, and Exotech and where you stand in the market? Thank you, Georgia. So, I'm Remy Malchiron. I'm in charge of all the, uh, the sales activity for Exotech in, uh, in Western Europe. So, uh, Exotech, we are a, a company who delivered robotic solution. Uh, robotic for supply chain within the warehouse. So we, uh, we deliver a solution which allows our customer to uh, densify a lot, you know, the, uh, the storage of goods and, uh, and uh, use our robots to deliver product in a goods to man solution. And, um, and we are born in the, uh, the world of uh, digitalization of e-commerce. And, uh, and I'll speak a little bit more later about, you know, the, 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 the the, the, the laborers and the, the man and machine uh, and, uh, and what we do in that space specifically. And Seb, what about you? Can you tell us a little bit more about Manhattan Associates? Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sebastian Febure. I'm a managing director in Southern Europe. And so I'm uh, part of uh, the Manhattan Associates uh, EMEA crew. Uh, well, for the ones that do not know uh, Manhattan Associates, we are a software vendor specialized in uh, supply chain execution, in omni-channel supply chain execution. So what we are doing on a daily basis here is addressing the complexity of omni-channel operation and making sure that we optimize from a customer promise and make it profitable for the brands and for the retailers. Um, the good thing also about our discussion today is about the partnership that we have uh, with Exotech that took uh, inception with uh, some of the uh, implementations that we have done together over the past uh, couple of years, representing a trend on, on the market that we're going to be discussing about uh, today. Uh, we've got several implementations live uh, working together on a couple of uh, others and um, interesting uh, discussions that we're going to be having uh, to talk about uh, the challenge of uh, omnichannel fulfillment today. Well, thank you very much for the context, Seb and Remy. This sounds a little bit like a match made in heaven. You've got the space saving, automated, ultra fast robotic side, and then you've got the competent, agile human labor side all matched together, which could be a real win for most companies. So on the screen, hopefully my technician at the back will start to play a video for me. <laughs> and on the screen, you'll start to see some imagery from Manhattan, from Exotech, and also from some of our customers showcasing some warehouse uh, operations, both human labor and indeed robotics. Um, the main warehouse that we're going to be showing there is Monoprix, which these guys are going to be mentioning during the day. So you'll be able to see some of their uh, operation. So Seb and Remy, when we think about customers who could benefit from this magical uh, partnership that you guys have developed, what is the primary need that a retailer would come to you with? What, what exactly would they be looking for? And what's the challenge <coughs> that we would be in a position to help them overcome? Rem, um, Seb. Uh, so, Remy, that's Whatever. you first. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, we work a lot, as Seb described, you know, I think that we worked a lot with uh, uh, retailers, whether they are pure players like e-commerce or omni-channel, but uh, this is definitely the type of customer that we work a lot with, not only, but a lot. And, and they are all living in a very fast changing world, very volatile, okay? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we've seen that in the last, uh, last couple of years, and they are all looking for you know, how can I, ha you know, address and, and provide the best customer experience um, in the most profitable way? 
and uh, with the kind of constraint that, well, it's, it's been more difficult today than ever to uh, predict my future. So, you know, when we do forecasts, we know that by essence they're going to be wrong. Um, and they need that, uh, you know, that type of performance that the customer experience that, you know, requires. Uh, whether it's same day delivery, next day delivery. Sometimes we work in the grocery business, for instance, is like a pretty much in the same hour or close to, you know, deliveries and stuff like that. So basically what they are looking for, they are looking for a super efficient uh, solution. So high logistic performance together with a, a very, very flexible solution. Um, because obviously, once again, investing in the future, expecting a return on your investment in 10 years from now is no longer an option for any of our customers. Absolutely not. So they are really looking for the mix of performance and flexibility. And I mean, it could be uh, when you're an omnichannel retailer, you don't know. You don't know what could be the mix between customer orders, between your you know, store replenishment and so on. So you need, a, you need a solution that will allow you to address all those type of challenges that I think most of the retailers are facing today. And that's why you know, the world of robotics coupled together with a highly performance uh, uh, software solution, WMS, is probably you know, the, uh, the, 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 the solution or the best solution that we can you know, provide to those, uh, to those retailers. And maybe to uh, elaborate a bit on, on what Remy uh, just said, uh, yeah, uh, the key word here is agility uh, that um, all the retailers and brands uh, need to get. The traditional uh, word of uh, warehousing as we have been uh, knowing, in, knowing it and optimizing it for decades um, has gone a couple of years ago and the acceleration obviously over the past two years has been uh, phenomenal. Um, well, th the biggest challenge uh, that um, today we need to uh, be able to address is a multiple service level within uh, the same distribution center. So uh, we talk about uh, next day delivery, two hours. Sometimes the order just needs to fly through the distribution center being uh, sent to the to the distribution center and automatically allocated, released on the floor, uh, getting higher priority uh, and being shipped um, immediately. And so this is one of the uh, complexities that retailers need to be able to address. The second one is obviously the balance of uh, orders and goods um, flowing through the different channel, wood sale, retail, e-com, and omni-channel uh, distribution center is obviously facing this high complexity of multiple type of order requiring different way to be fulfilled and to be addressed. On top of it, we need to add the labor shortage, uh, creating this massive complexity of how can we optimize the operation and, and the trend of robots uh, come on, on, top of, uh, on top of it. Um, well, all of this means that this traditional way of optimizing a distribution center by using Wave, for example, um, is gone. Uh, we are talking about waveless, uh, meaning that constantly reallocating orders reprioritizing what's happening on the floor based on potential delay of the carrier coming at 5 p.m. Well, it's got 30 minutes late, so we can reallocate um, the orders and the task to different workers uh, immediately on the floor, and this is a reality. I, I fully agree with you, Seb. I think that uh, you know, the, the, the point that you mentioned about the way left system and uh, the agility of the solution being super reactive to any type of order that we receive is, is super important. And the traditional automation was not really meant to build you know, those type of uh, solution, uh, whether it's because you, know, you have to organize your storage so that you, know, you pick your fast runner first and so on, or, or, or whatever type of solution. But I mean, one of the key things with Exotech, maybe you're going to see that on the video, is that we obviously deliver a big you know, storage systems <coughs> and, uh, and all the totes or cartons are immediately available, meaning that we send out our robots and the big innovation of Exotech is those robots are moving in three dimensions, meaning that they climb into the racks to pick up the totes and deliver it to the uh, operator so that he can prepare you know, multiple orders at the same time. And the way we uh, allocate the task to the robots is built on top priority, meaning that if you have a super urgent order, whether it's a premium customer or you had a cutoff at you know, 4 p.m. and uh, it's 3.50 and you want to make sure that this order will be ready, 
you know, we can reprioritize the order, just as you said, and make sure that this top priority, you know, is, is handled in, a, in, in first place. So really, this kind of a waveless scenarios with all items being accessible at the same time and, and making sure that within two minutes, we can prepare an order is, is obviously one of the key strengths of, uh, of, our, of our solution and obviously one of the key um, topics for, for all the retailers. So what I'm hearing here is that you can indeed do everything in the same DC, the single pick e-com fulfillment, the store replenishment, and that whether you've got human labor or indeed the, the automation working in tandem with each other, you've still got the speed, the agility, the change of direction if you need to have it. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the questions that a lot of people ask when we talk about robots in an operational world is the impact on human labor. Mm -hmm. So Seb, can you reassure us that the introduction of robots doesn't mean that we're all no longer needed, <laughs> that there's still room for human labor? Um, well, well, maybe uh, this is a good point. There is a word to describe this, which is cobots, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, meaning collaborative robots. Uh, which describe a bit uh, the way uh, robots uh, can work very efficiently with, uh, with, with robots, uh, with humans, sorry. And um, it, it's fairly important here because, uh, yes, obviously, I mentioned about one of the key challenges that most of the uh, retailers or the supply chain uh, directors are facing, which is labor shortage. And uh, one of the, uh, um, obviously, uh, way to address this challenge is to start implementing uh, some robots to address this challenge and to create a kind of a standard uh, labor force uh, within the distribution center. On top of it, uh, the main purpose also of the robots, when we're talking about cobots, uh, is to remove some of the uh, painful uh, task operations that uh, the employees need to perform uh, on the floor on a daily basis, meaning manipulating heavy item, for example. So there is a very nice way, and Remy uh, mentioned about uh, the difference between traditional automation and, and robots. And I think that the difference is here. Traditional automation means that, I mean, this is, this is going to be a standard equipment, fully dedicated, fully automatized to address low flexibility. Uh, when we start discussing about cobots, there is this idea of human collaborating on some of the uh, tasks to make sure that uh, we can scale up quite easily. So obviously, uh, human are still there uh, and uh, obviously here to focus on some of the highest uh, value added task, which is also driving the operation. Mm -hmm. No, no, no that, that's very important. You know, we worked in, um, you know, with many customers around the world, okay, at, at Exotech and uh, we work with customers in Europe, we work with customers in Japan, in America, everywhere, absolutely everywhere. You know, one of the main challenges in, uh, in the warehousing is labor. I mean, I think that I didn't meet a client in the last few months or years with, without talking about labor shortages as probably, you know, one of their main issues. Um, so, um, so really, you know, clearly, you know, clearly thinking, I mean, I think the, 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 the customer, when they came to us, the idea was, okay, uh, how can we expand? How can we deliver this, uh, this promise and that ever evolving, uh, you know, customer expectation and so on? Still, you know, we've got a hell of a challenge with, uh, you know, the current labor that we do, that we got. And, uh, and, and, and what I think about, you know, the, 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 the labor shortages and the, the robotic and the relationship between human and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and robots, what, what we say to our customer is, uh, well, you should really focus on your operation, on the activity who's got some value for your customer, so value added services. So most of the time when, you know, I think that here we are, you know, mainly talking to about e-commerce, um, obviously one of the big you know, activity and the differentiating activity when you are in the e-commerce space, it's obviously all the packing activity and uh, that's where you're going to put, you know, some sort of uh, brand and identity, some sort of, uh, you know, customer experience, you as a, you know, as a retailer or e-commerce uh, pure player, you want to make sure that when your customer receive your product, they feel a little bit of that brand uh, and that customer experience so that you can differentiate yourself from the Amazon or whoever. And, um, and I think that what we are telling to, you, uh, to those customers is 
okay, well, give us the boring activity, okay, in a sense, okay, yeah, you, can, you can do that with a robot, okay, walking, you know, multiple, you know, miles, carrying heavy, uh, you know, weight items is probably not the most, uh, you know, value-added services you can think of, but dedicate your personal to, you know, maybe on the packing side, Sometimes when you work in the premium business or luxury business, obviously the inbound process is extremely, uh, you know, important as well. You know, so, so those are the kind of activity where you really need some, uh, you know, people and human yep. to do that job. Now, if you want to walk in a warehouse to just bring the right item to the right, you know, to the operator, most likely the robots are more efficient. They will go faster with less errors. And, uh, and, and it allows you to basically dedicate your, your, your labor force to the, the activity that will, you know, differentiate yourself from the, the, from the competition. Well, I, I, for one, am feeling quite relieved that there is still labor needed because I was getting a bit worried that Remy was going to bring in one of his Skypods and replace me. Maybe, but maybe. Fortunately, <laughs> no, no, that would be unfair. <laughs> so let's, let's touch on productivity because clearly productivity is something that we're all striving to achieve within the warehouse environment. And my understanding is that something like the Skypod can really impact a task like order preparation times in the DC. Of course. Can yeah. you talk to that a little bit? I mean, uh, I mean, every every uh, you know case is obviously very different. Uh, you know, we work with um, you know grocery retailers, with fashion retailers, with you know any sort of retail. We work in the manufacturing business. The first customer ever that we have. I mean, we are a fairly young company at Exotech. Okay, we've got just seven years old, but still, you know, like uh, you know, 50 plus customer already. The first customer ever was C Discount, so basically like the French Amazon, okay, the largest uh, e-commerce pure player in France, and um, and and then uh, you know customer like Monoprix as well, which is a very well known in the in the French market where we do business together, such so, you know C Discount as well, and um, and I think that they are traditional for their e-commerce business. I think that they are. You know, traditional lead time used to be like 15 minutes to prepare an order. We went down to two minutes, okay, with, uh, with Exotech. So um, when you think about, you know, productivity, it's obviously, you know, in terms of uh, how fast we can react, how quickly we can prepare an order. And, um, and um, you know, that, that's a good example. Um, and we usually, you know, prepare like, um, you know, 350, 400, you know, line order line per hour or, you know, that, that, that gives you some sort of uh, IDs. Can go even higher with some additional robotics component. You know, we got what we call our sky picker, which is a picking arm. So basically, uh, you know, the, uh, the sky pod, I don't know if you see that on the, on the video, brings, you know, the product to the operator that prepare multiple order together. But we can also have a robot that basically does this type of preparation. So basically picked it from the totes uh, and put it into the, uh, the, the outbound container. So the, the, you know, the product where, where the, the totes where the product will be shipped. And we can have a, you know, a robotic arm to do this kind of activity. And then it goes to up to 600 lines per hour. So if you, if you really mean in terms of productivity and uh, the kind of performance that we can reach with that type of solution, we can, you know, most of the time we compete with the shuttles yep. and all those kind of solutions that are supposed to be, you know, you know, the uh, high end of performance. Yeah, but 15 minutes down to two minutes for an order preparation time, that's pretty, pretty special. So if we broaden that out, Seb, and look at more of the technology platform around the robotics and the larger WMS piece, what role can that technology play in bringing benefits and value add to the uh, operation? I, I talk about the agility that uh, a brand and a retailer needs to have, and obviously uh, technology is key. The first thing that uh, technology should bring is not any uh, technical uh, depth, because when we're talking about uh, agility, we need to make sure that we can adapt uh, really fast. So obviously technology is key in this, uh, in this essence. Um, the second element is uh, traditionally um, the uh, wearers 
uh, we have always been considering the four worlds of the distribution center and mentioning that WMS needs to be able to cover and optimize all the operation uh, within within uh, these uh, four worlds of the distribution center. Well, this is no longer the case because, I mean, within the process of the distribution center, we need to be able to collaborate, to exchange information with uh, external system. So in order to do that, we are um, leveraging API technology. All our solutions are running 100% full API uh, to make sure that we can uh, put together those type of scenarios. And maybe I can give a couple of examples here. The first one is late order cancellation. I mean, uh, you place an order uh, on the e-com website, ready to be fulfilled, uh, and at the packing station, potentially, hey, you want to check if the status of the order has changed. Any last minute change, uh, even after it has been packed and ready to be shipped, but you still want to be able to catch this scenario. Well, it's the type of things that you want to be able to uh, manage and within the, the distribution center, check the status of the order prior to shipping it. One example. The second one is uh, one of the uh, uh, major uh, leading sport uh, brand worldwide, uh, leveraging our technology um, to make sure that uh, they can um, allocate orders initially from all their returns that they are getting uh, prior to allocating from traditional um, e traditional inventories that they have within their distribution center, and obviously. The third element, which is uh, probably um, the most exciting one, is around machine learning, uh, because machine learning is opening the brand new world of predictive and be able to anticipate and also uh, identify patterns that would not be able to configure, uh, to identify and to model uh, within the process of your distribution center. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe I can add something because I, you know, you know, I was watching the Manhattan video as well, when when you were talking about, you know, some uh, some some software component and uh, um, you talk about, you know, the last, uh, you know, software you will, you know, ever implement and so on. I think that when you talk about productivity as well, one of the things that we do at uh, at Exotech is obviously behind the robot, there is a, you know, a big software component, okay? I mean, if you, you know, ever see a, 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 a Skypod system working with like, um, you know, a fleet of 200 robots running at four meters per second in the warehouse and it's going up and down, it's like, you know, it's, it, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, interesting to watch. And obviously you can imagine that there is, you know, a big software behind. And, um, and uh, we work, you know, together with, uh, you know, with multiple implementation with, with Manhattan, where we are, you know, fully synchronized and fully, uh, uh, you know, connected real time. And the other thing that we do similar to what, what you guys do is that uh, we provide software, which is always up to date. So they, there will not be, you know, if you think about traditional automation as well, it's always, you know, custom build. So the last thing you want to do is to start, you know, touching your, your, your WCS, okay, your, your basically your, the software that manages your, your automation. What we do with Exotech is something totally different. We've got our software, the same version of our software installed to all our customers. And, and, and we see after a couple of years with all the improvement that we do on our software, whether we optimize the algorithm of, uh, you know, the solution and how fast, the, you know, the robot can move and, and so on, that they bring some additional productivity just because of the software operation and the software optimization, sorry. We work with Carrefour, for instance, which is obviously a, you know, a big, uh, you know, grocery retailer in the French market. We do some... Uh, MFC, so micro fulfillment centers, and some e-commerce. And over the past, uh, you know, three years since they've been operating our solution, you know, their main DC where they do e-commerce, they've been able to handle new sort of orders. You know, initially it was supposed to be, uh, you know, more like uh, for uh, delivering to their drives. And now they have, you know, with, uh, with the imp improvement of our solution and the software, they cannot, they can now, you know, take in their in their facility some additional uh, orders so it's like uh, you know home deliveries and, and stuff like that so the performance and the productivity georgia is uh, is not something which is uh, you know something uh, stable it's something that we can improve over time with this type of flexible automation
Absolutely. And I think this, these productivity gains that we can bring to the operation are absolutely crucial for the competitive edge of the people in our audience and for them to really grow consumer loyalty by that reliability, that speed of fulfillment that they can deliver. Remy, you mentioned micro fulfillment centers, and I wanted to ask you, Seb, about um, bringing that great big complex DC a little bit more locally to the consumer and how that, how we can, um, how you can support that sort of uh, operation. I talked uh, earlier about the multiple service level that uh, today um, a brand or a retailer needs to be able to offer to their uh, customer. And when we are talking about two hours, uh, two hours delivery, for example, well, uh, you need to leverage not only your big distribution centers that are the one where potentially you have invested a lot in automation in the past, uh, but you need to complement your um, uh, dis your supply chain network with some uh, micro fulfillment. So, so we call them dark store or micro micro fulfillment center. But the reality here is that this is this uh, network of multiple source of fulfillment uh, that makes uh, the beauty of um, being able to offer uh, incredible omnichannel experience and be able to keep on premise if you want to deliver uh, very, uh, very fast. Um, we, we've got a pretty good uh, experience here implementing various type of uh, uh, omnichannel uh, complexity here. And um, maybe uh, one element that I wanted to share also is what we see with one of our uh, c customers that we have in, in common, a sport uh, retailer brand very uh, well known uh, in Europe which has on top of their network of DC focusing on retail and potentially omnichannel distribution centers, they are opening um, a distribution center only focusing on e-com fulfillment, micro fulfillment. So high speed of implementation of those sites. Uh, we've got already five sites live in uh, less than a year. The next one is going live uh, soon uh, with some uh, exotech and Manhattan technology into it uh, to bring this uh, to, to life. So this is um, wh what is interesting also, and, and, and Remy did not mention it, uh, I forgot to mention it also at the beginning when we were talking about flexibility, is uh, the beauty of uh, robots is, a way that is also that you can scale up quite easily compared to traditional automation. And so it's uh, also allowing to put some uh, robots into a micro fulfillment center, which would not be possible with traditional automation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that micro fulfillment does is it does bring the inventory that much closer to the customer, mm -hmm. which enables everyone to start to compete with giants like Amazon in terms of speed of delivery. And also the cost of delivery comes down quite significantly the, the, the closer you get. So this is clearly a strategy that many people are now embracing. Is there a particular part of the industry that should look at micro fulfillment like a grosser fashion or is it? everyone i think that definitely for grocery it's a big deal okay it's definitely a massive deal for grocery obviously because i mean you you probably uh you know leave your office on the friday afternoon at four o'clock and uh, you want to stop by and grab your stuff and you know go back home in a in a in less than an hour or something so obviously i mean it, it touched many uh, many 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 different uh, you know verticals with retail but but grocery is definitely a big one um and um and it's a big challenge to be honest because i think it creates also some sort of uh, you know if you want to bring a true truly i mean the idea is basically you want to go closer to the customer so that you can deliver faster and uh, and you know that that that's the main challenge is that immediately you start looking and i was discussing you know just just before that meeting with uh, some people who are you know transforming you know garage and parking slot into uh into some sort of uh, you know, warehouses so it, it's kind of complex to do to go into the city and to find the right spot to optimize your supply chain at the same time so obviously we can bring some uh, some value into that but i think that uh 
the, 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 the challenge right now is um, how to optimize something, still being closer to the big city, when you've got obviously the square foot which is going higher, labor shortages, we talked about it, uh, customer expectations that are even higher. So that's why you know, we are starting to see some automation into those type of, uh, but you need some volume to get the benefits of the, uh, the automation. So it, it's a complex uh, equation to solve. And, uh, and we see different type of, um, um, I would say, uh, trials or, or experiences, uh, even in France or abroad in the US and so on. But, um, but it's an interesting evolving story. And maybe some of the, um, I mean, Remy mentioned about the, uh, uh, the grocery, but uh, also some of the specialty uh, retailers. Uh, they want to save some uh, backroom. Uh, to increase their sales uh, space. But at the same time, I mean, for example, in do-it-yourself, mm -hmm. being able to offer some uh, uh, two hours delivery or uh, immediate pickup, but in a different location. So the uh, micro fulfillment center is in fact a good way also to manage, um, and to manage uh, this type of uh, complexity. So hopefully what we've showcased today is the fact that man and machine can coexist within the warehouse environment. In fact, it's a plus to have them working alongside each other, especially if you've got a single piece of technology who's orchestrating the processes associated with each one. We've also talked about the ability to cater to the big complex centralized DC, but also those more local micro fulfillment centers. Um, we're about to wrap up here, but if any of you have any questions, please do come forward. Remy, Seb, anything that you'd like to close out with? We're just a We're just couple over of there. Uh, yes. If you want to come and talk to us, uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. And thank you very yeah. much for your time today. Yeah. Thank you.